and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today we are going to talk about animal breeding and here's a problem. Let's assume a population of 3000 animals but only 20 males and 300 females participate in breeding. Each female gets 10 offspring. What is the rate of inbreeding in this population? Thus far from my previous videos you know how to calculate rate of inbreeding or inbreeding coefficient based on the pedigrees or rate of inbreeding in retrospect. However, as it provides an indication of the expected increase in inbreeding depression, it would be nice to be able to predict the rate of inbreeding in future generations. Just like in our today's problem. Predicting the exact future is not possible, but you can make an approximation. And here's a simple formula to get an idea about the effect of the selection decisions with respect to the number of breeding animals. In this formula F stands for the inbreeding, N M stands for the number of uh, males and N F stands for the number of female animals. In other words this formula tell us that if you know the number of males and females that are used for breeding you can predict what are the rate of the inbreeding will be. You also have to understand that uh, exact rate of inbreeding also will depend on the genetic uh, relationships between animals and it is not taken into account in this formula but you have to understand that in all this type of calculations all numbers that we are going to get is just approximation. So let's return to our problem and our formula. So F is going to stand for the inbreeding coefficient or inbreeding in the following generation and we have to find number of males which is 20. So 8 times 20 plus 1 divided by number of females participating in breeding and this is going to be 8 times 300. So 320 animals would be effective size of this population. Those total number of animals is 3000 but some of them would be too young to participate in breeding or too young for matings and some of them can be too old. Also we may have some animals that would be of the ideal age but for certain reasons they also do not participate in matings. This also happens. So our effective size of this population is going to be 320 animals. But you also have to understand with this number of males and females we should expect certain degree of the inbreeding in the following generation because this number is small. The smaller number of participating animals in breeding the higher going to be uh, inbreeding coefficient or inbreeding in the next generation. So if we do a mass here we are going to get 0 0.0067. This answer is given on the scale between 0 and 1. If you need an answer in percent form we have to multiply by 100 or in this case we have to move this decimal point to places to the right and we are going to get 0.67 percent. This is going to be expected in breeding in the following generation. Now I also want you to think would it matter how the 320 animals were divided across males and females. Try to do calculations again. For example, if you would use 160 males and 160 females. And what if you use 2 males and 318 females. You will find out that more skewed the proportion of the breeding males and females is the higher the rate of the inbreeding. Now think about population size. Would this matter? For example, if you would use only one male and one female for breeding. And how the rate of the inbreeding would change if you would increase that number to say 10 males and 10 females. 
or 100 males and 100 females, you will find out that in very small breeding population, the rate of inbreeding can be controlled by using equal numbers of males and females for breeding. Even if you would use ratio 1 to 1, but number of males and females would be small, you're going to get inbreeding. And coefficient would be higher than if you, for example, would use a large number of breeding animals. In this table is a summary of what I have said. So one more time, the rate of inbreeding depends on the combination of the proportion of breeding males and females. It's better to have 160 males and 160 females. So in this case, inbreeding would be less. Next, the number of breeding males and females. Again, it's better to have 100 males and females than 10 males and 10 females. In this case, inbreeding would be higher because we have smaller number of animals. And next, variation in family size. This is something I want to explain you now. So far, we have assumed that the family size, so number of offspring in males and females, is equal for all families. In real life, it is not the case because the rate of inbreeding is most influenced by the largest family because they will have the largest proportion of the offspring in the next generation or generations. We also have assumed that the population size remains constant across generations. In real life, this may not always be the case. Populations may decrease in size because of the, for example, decrease in popularity or a disease outbreak. They may increase in size because of the, for example, in increase in popularity or smaller mortality rate than anticipated. So fluctuations in population size is just like bottleneck effect, which also leads to increase in inbreeding. And this is all for today. Just don't forget to memorize this formula, which every breeder should know. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.